A reading from the first book of Kings. Jeroboam left Jerusalem, and the prophet Ahijah, the Shilonite, met him on the road. The two were alone in the area, and the prophet was wearing a new cloak. Ahijah took off his new cloak, tore it into twelve pieces, and said to Jeroboam, Take ten pieces for yourself. The Lord, the God of Israel, says, I will tear away the kingdom from Solomon's grasp and will give you ten of the tribes. One tribe shall remain to him for the sake of David, my servant, and of Jerusalem, the city I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. Israel went into rebellion against David's house to this day. The word of the Lord. I am the Lord, your God. Hear my voice. There shall be no strange God among you, nor shall you worship any alien God. I, the Lord, am your God, who led you forth from the land of Egypt. I am the Lord, your God. Hear my voice. My people heard not my voice, and Israel obeyed me not. So I gave them up to the hardness of their hearts. They walked according to their own counsels. If only my people would hear me, and Israel walk in my ways. Quickly would I humble their enemies. Against their foes I would turn my hand. to the words of your Son. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Dominos vobiscum. Lectio Sancti Evangelii secundum Marcum. Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and spitting touched his tongue. Then he took up, looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened his speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Verbum Domini. The 
the Alleluia verse says, Open our hearts, O Lord, to listen to the words of your Son. That's the disposition that we should have when we listen to the word of God and meditate upon the word of God and pray with the word of God. Open our hearts, O Lord, that I may hear the words of your Son. We have been hearing about the healing ministry of the Lord Jesus this week in the gospel. Ultimately, the entire public ministry of Jesus was about healing not from merely external diseases or ailments, but precisely to bring spiritual healing, liberation from sin, inner restoration, inner freedom in our hearts. God the Son became man to bring about this healing touch, to heal about, bring about this healing restoration. The prophet Isaiah said in the 8th century before Christ that the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a harp and the tongue of the dumb sing for joy. Throughout the prophet Isaiah's writings, you would often think that he knew Jesus personally just by reading his writings. St. Jerome, who lived in the late 4th, early 5th century after Christ, said this about the prophet Isaiah. He was more of an evangelist than a prophet because he described all of the mysteries of church and of Christ so vividly that you would assume that he was prophesying about the future, but rather composing a history of past events. The prophet Isaiah also said in chapter 53, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. As God the Son in his sacred humanity, Jesus chose to fully identify with the sufferings of mankind. When Jesus touched the infirmed, and that is all throughout the Gospels, the infirmed, the sick, the ill, the cripple, the lame, the blind, or for that matter, when they touched him, There are many instances in the Gospels where the sick reached out to touch Christ. Think of the woman who suffered from hemorrhages, reaching out to touch Jesus as he was walking by. We can say, and saints have said this, that he experienced in his own person, that is his divine person, Remember, Jesus is true God and true man, only begotten of the Father, that he experienced in his own person not only the physical pain, but also the spiritual anguish of people, of people that he touched, of people that touched him. The gospel relates that Jesus groaned after putting his finger in the man's ear. Have you ever groaned in anguish when you were sick or distressed? Of course we all have. When we're lying there sick and distressed and in pain and anguish and body and mind even sometimes, we groan, we wail in pain. And if we think we do that, think how much more God the Son, the eternal word, groaned in his own person when he touched, when he came into contact with people who were in pain and suffering in mind, body, and soul. 
Imagine and pray about the Lord groaning in your own pain, in your own sufferings. The Lord groans. We really believe that as Christians, that Jesus is one with us. As St. Paul says, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. That Jesus is within us, and that there is nothing apart from the human experience save sin. He didn't sin. He didn't experience sin. But there's nothing a part of that human experience that he did not take and draw up into himself, into his own life. Pope St. Gregory the Great in the fifth century commented on this miracle of the Lord, saying the spirit is called the finger of God. When the Lord puts his fingers in the ears of the deaf mute, He was opening the soul of man to faith through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And St. Paul would comment on this in his writings that faith comes through hearing the word of God. If you've ever witnessed a baptism, there is a point where the minister, the priest, touches the ears and then the mouth of the infant. The prayer during the rite of baptism is usually called the Ephatha prayer. The minister says, The Lord Jesus made the deaf hear and the dumb speak. May he soon touch your ears to receive his word. The priest makes a sign of the cross over the ears. And your mouth to proclaim the praise of and glory of God the Father. Touching his ears first is significant. Hearing the word of God proceeds proclamation from the mouth. So our ears are first because the word of God we hear through our ears. And through hearing, hopefully then throughout our lives, hopefully transformation happens in our own hearts, in our own minds, and then we are able to proclaim, to profess the word of God. So hearing, transformation takes place through grace, through faith, and then proclamation. And hopefully, ultimately, not only proclamation through the profession of the creed, but witness, the witness of our lives living the faith as Christians. Touching the ears is first significant. Hearing the word of God precedes proclamation with the mouth, but hearing the word of God enables faith to take root and grow within us and our hearts and be converted from and be converted that we may profess the faith, not just from lip service, but truly from a believing intellect and a converted heart. In the extraordinary form of the Roman rite, after the Ephatha prayer, that is after the ears are touched, the nostrils are touched. And the full prayer translated from the Latin is Ephatha, which means be opened, so that you may perceive the fragrance of God's sweetness. But you, O devil, depart, for the judgment of God has come. Again, the prayer says Ephatha, which means be opened, so that you may perceive the fragrance of God's sweetness. St. Paul talks about this in his writings as well, about us being the fragrance of Christ, the odor of Christ in the world. The prayer says, 
but you, O devil, depart, for the judgment, O God, has come. Baptism in itself is an exorcism. With all of that said, deaf persons who cannot physically hear, and there are many people in our world who are deaf, they cannot physically hear, but they can receive, and they can still respond to the grace of faith. Faith can be communicated through sign language, through symbols. In prayer, the Lord speaks in silence. And silence is said to be the first language of God. Mother Teresa says, silence is the fruit of prayer. Silence draws us into that rare and profound form of communication that draws us into an awareness of the divine. And there are many saints who are patron saints of deaf persons. I looked up a few, St. Pacificus of St. Severino, and he was a young man whose health failed and he spent the last 29 years of his life lame, deaf, and mute. And you would think that he wouldn't be an asset to society, some people might say, that he couldn't be out there in the apostolate communicating as he was. But God doesn't look at it at us in terms of what we can do, but God looks at us in terms of who we are, in terms of being, not doing, who we are. So there are many people who are blind, lame, deaf, and mute who have intrinsic value just as much value as yourself and me. I had the experience in seminary of going to a rehabilitation center for people with uh, mental diseases and mental challenges. And there was one person that I was to visit the one day, it was one of my first weeks going, and I had a list to go visit and I was going room by room to visit, and I got to one of the rooms, and the patient wasn't there. And I went to one of the nurses on staff, and I said, where is so-and-so? And they merely pointed to where he was. And I looked down the hallway, and he was on the ground. And he was looking up at the wall, actually the ceiling, completely catatonic, completely catatonic, not even moving, not even moving his eyes, not even responding. So it was one of those moments of the Holy Spirit where I just literally got down next to him and just spoke to him as if I'm speaking to you right now. It's because somebody is not responding in the way that you or I do doesn't mean that they're not able to receive, able to understand. He could have been able to understand everything that I was saying, but because of some, something that was going on in his brain, he wasn't able to respond. And I believe that's what Jesus does. As a matter of fact, I know that's what Jesus does. That's what Jesus, that's what Jesus gets down on his knees. He gets down right into the dirt, right where we are. In our fallen human condition. When we're in pain, when we're lonely, when we're distressed, 
even when we're angry. Jesus comforts us. At this moment right now, there are many people listening who are deaf, who can't hear. And this entire Mass is being closed captioned right now. Our viewers may not know that. You may not know that. But right now, there's a woman closed captioning the entire Mass back behind me somewhere in the midst of EWTN, who is everything that is being said, the prayers, even the music, the words, is speaking into a microphone and then the closed captioning for the hearing and impaired so that those who can't hear may be able to read and to receive the word of God. Deaf persons have much to contribute to the life of the church. If you are deaf and you are watching, please know that you are loved by Almighty God and that you are embraced by God and the entire church. We love you. We can say with certitude based on today's gospel that God fully identifies with you. that he doesn't forget his people. The lesson from the gospel is not simply about bodily deafness being cured, but there is a universal deafness that we all suffer from due the, to the consequences of original sin. People of every age and culture become deaf to the words of Christ. The words of Christ are not penetrated within us. We may hear them, but they, but they may fall deaf. We, might, we, might, we may not let them penetrate our hearts and change our lives. And we can see this in our own culture and even in the church. But more deeply, let's be honest, we can see a certain deafness to the gospel within ourselves. And that's something to meditate upon today. How, where is my own deafness, Jesus? Can I hear your words? Do I hear your words? Do the words of the gospel truly transform my own mind, my own way of thinking? St. Paul says to, to be transformed by the renewal of your mind so that you may judge what is the will of God, what is good, pleasing, and perfect. To allow the, Christ, the words of Christ to completely transform my own mind and my own manner of life. We can allow sin to deafen and blind our vision of faith and ultimately of reality itself, the way we look at reality. The way we perceive reality can be blinded by sin. The spiritual deafness which infects us because of sin has a remedy. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the remedy for deafness, for blindness. Not just bodily deafness, bodily blindness, but spiritual blindness spiritual deafness, most of all through the sacraments of the church. He opens up and unclogs our ears in the midst of a culture that is polluted with noise. So much noise in our world. So much noise in our church. So much noise in our own lives that we allow to pollute us. And we can't hear the voice of Christ. He opens up our eyes from the blinders of sin and gives us the supernatural vision of faith. Pray for that today. Pray for, again, when you imagine Jesus groaning when he touches the man 
who is death. And Jesus groans. Take that to your own prayer. Imagine Jesus groaning in your own life over your own sins, over your own deafness, over your own blindness. St. Cyril Methodius, pray for us.